Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley starting a business, building a brand vlog. This one, big number, 272, the vlog that hopefully I don't get run over. Today, we're going into Salon Posta. Gonna go in, gotta check out some things. What I thought we'd do is talk a little bit more specifically about the business itself. You know, talk about employees, talk about some of the expenses that I didn't realize we were gonna have or were gonna be so expensive. Also talk a little bit more specifically about my personal investment in this place and how or if I'm gonna be able to actually make some money on this business. Uh, but let's go in, sort of do a little tour, and then we'll head back to the office and talk about money and this business. What's up? How are you? How are you? Yeah, what's he up? called me up and asked me, what's up? Hi. How are you? Hello, I'm good. How's everything been going so far? Very good. Everybody, this is Vanessa. She is the manager. She Hi. makes sure that everything is under control and Steve isn't a diva. Hard job. <laughs> <laughs> what I've come to realize is that working with all women except Steven, Steven is the biggest diva out of all of them. I have to agree. <laughs> so anyway, so how have things been going? We've been open now for about six weeks, maybe seven. Yeah, um, yeah. How's it been going? It's been going good. We've been really blessed. Super busy. Um, everything's working like a team. What's up, Courtney? How's everything been going? <laughs> no, Courtney, like, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Cor Courtney is the other manager, right? Yes. Hello. Okay. How have things been going so far? We've been open now for about like six, seven weeks. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's amazing. I the everyone seems to be really happy, and um, we're really booked, and it's exciting, and yeah, it's going really good. Good. How's your husband holding up? Yeah, he's good. No, he's good. Everything's awesome. Courtney is the wife of Tony, the other business partner. It's me, Tony, and Stephen in terms of the owners. And uh, Laura. Hey. <laughs> so you got cool emails from people? Um, yeah, I've got some some messages from some alpha fans. How have things been going so far? We've been in business now for like six months um, or six weeks. No, set, we're in our eighth week. Eight, eight, eight weeks. weeks. How's it been going? Um, nice and smooth. You know, it's getting busy. A lot of new clients. You know, um, everybody's excited about the place. They're just like, you know, it's just like a new journey to go on, and everybody's just coming for the ride. Lots of reviews. Lots of reviews. Lots of great reviews. Did you leave five a review? Star. Five stars. Five stars? Five, star? five and a half. Five and a half. <laughs> Now originally the idea was that up here was going to be kind of like the guys area, right? Well, that plan has sort of changed a little bit and the reason is because, you know, in terms of, of, of profitability with the salon, men are not as profitable as, as women and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, and so we have gotten so busy down below that we know that we're going to have overflow and need more uh, women stylists up here and so what we're going to end up doing is we just placed the order for some more like white cabinets. We're going to have like cabinets there, cabinets up there. We've got these two really cool like black uh, mirrors that are going to go there to make that like two additional stations. Over the shampoo bowls, yesterday we just installed this cool little shelf. We're going to do more cabinets up there. We're going to have another color bar up here because instead of people having to like run up and down and color, 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 that's, that's like... Anyway, let's run back to the office, sit down and actually talk a little bit more about money and this place and all that stuff. Hey! <laughs> How's everything been going? How have you liked the place so far? I freaking love it. Yeah? It's, it's getting great. comfortable. How are the clients? Amazing. Yeah? Amazing. I love it. I love coming in here because it doesn't feel like work. It's just really the lighting, the people. I mean, it's just nice. You're rocking it. Yeah. Tomorrow we're filming tomorrow. Get ready. Damn, and I wore my sparkly pants today. I know. What? Look at those pants. <laughs> All right, so tomorrow we're actually filming another video. Christian is coming back. Um, we tried to film one before, but it sucked. And so tomorrow we're gonna do a better job. And uh, anyway, uh, let's go back to the office. Later, ladies. Bye. Bye. And we're back. All right, so now what I thought we'd do is talk a little bit more, not a little bit, talk in depth and detail about this business and talk a little bit more specifically about the money in terms of how much money I've invested into it and sort of the structure of the business, how it makes money, and what the potential is. Um, because I know that, you know, even though I'm gonna be uncomfortable talking about money, because I always get like super uncomfortable talking about money for whatever reason, this is a business vlog, and I think there might be some information that maybe some of you that decide to go into business might find valuable, or just might make you look at things a little bit differently. And I think that anytime people are willing to sort of divulge things 
and, and, and strategies or money and talk about it, it definitely is something that could be potentially good for you wanting to be an entrepreneur. Because I know for me, growing up, I never had anybody that I could really talk to about business or entrepreneurship. Nobody that I really hung out with, nobody's you know, family members. Like, like I come from a very blue collar, low blue collar area. And so there was never really a talk or discussion around money or business. And I think that that is something that is so incredibly important in terms of educating yourself when it comes to business or money that just needs to happen. Back when I was growing up, I didn't have that opportunity. And so maybe some of you will find this interesting. And even though I get super uncomfortable and like squirmy talking about money, I'm gonna talk about money today because that is what I'm here to do in terms of helping you on your entrepreneurial journey. All right, so number one, I bought that building and the way that it works just to like refresh your memory if you guys missed that vlog. The way that it works, I own the building, I bought the building, I covered all the renovation costs, I bought all of the salon equipment that is in that place. So basically, I built a salon, I own that. But then, there's another business. The salon posted, there are three of us, me, Stephen, and Tony, came together to form another entity. That entity rents the salon from me, but I also own, you know, a, a good percentage of, of that business. Um, Steven has the majority of that business, Salon Posta, and then Tony and I split the other, you know, part of the equity. Uh, Tony ended up putting up, I believe it was like around $75,000 in order to basically get all of the inventory in terms of color and just have like operating capital. He also, you know, paid for the sign and some other things. What I paid was $735,000 for that building. It was run down, it was dilapidated. Going into it, in my head, I thought I was gonna have to spend another like $750,000 in order to renovate it completely and fix it up. It ended up going over that. All in, like all like, including like the, the fee that I paid my, my contractor, all of the engineering fees, all of the design fees, hiring my designer, my interior designer friend, Minuet, in order to come in and sort of help buying the furniture, all the salon equipment, all in, I'm at $2 million. So I have $2 million invested in this project. I did not finance anything. I paid everything out of pocket. As the renovation was happening, I was saving money and extra money I was putting into this fund so that I could pay for everything and not have to you know, go and borrow money from a bank. Now. I know that a lot of people will tell you that is the absolute worst thing to do right now with interest rate rates super low and the market getting super crazy returns. You can borrow money cheaper, use it there, take your money, invest it in the market, make the difference and you're coming out ahead. And I understand that and that is not a wrong answer. And I know for a lot of people that's a smarter thing to do. For me, I like peace of mind. I also like to sleep well. And so for me, it was more logical, not more logical, it made me feel better to actually not have debt. I hate debt, it scares me. I filed bankruptcy and so debt scares me. And so, the way that I look at things, I invested $2 million. I'm getting rent every month. Essentially what it works out to is I am making like six to 7% interest on my money. And so, yes, I've got money tied up in that. It is an asset that will appreciate eventually, but I'm making, you know, 6% you know, on my money every year. And that's not like a horrible return. It's also, you know, allowed me to sort of start this other business that I am part owners in and I will be taking a distribution of the profits. And so when you really look at the fact that I've invested $2 million, I'm not only getting 6% in terms of rent every year, I'm also getting a percentage of the profits, which will be substantial. I'm gonna have that place paid off in a few years. That's the other thing. Hair salons, when run properly, when catering to a specific demographic and clientele, women specifically, that are a little bit like higher end, um, these salons can generate a tremendous amount of revenue. The other great news is that, you know, for our salon, it has the potential to really do big numbers because of the size of it. You know, we have 28 potential stylist spaces, so we can basically have 28 people. Currently, we have 13 stylists, and our biggest problem right now is that we don't have enough stylists. So in terms of employees, Salon Posta right now currently has around 23 employees, 13 of which are stylists. Two of the stylists are like part-time stylists slash assistants. They're still like working up and, and developing their skills. Um, we also have a bunch of assistants, front desk people, and managers. Now, 
In terms of revenue, the average ticket price for each customer that comes into Salon Posta is around like $135 to $150, but it can be much more than that. If somebody is actually coming in to get like extensions or you know a few different like color treatments, it really can add up. Now, this also brings us to one of the downsides that we didn't understand. I should say Tony and I didn't understand what an expense it was, and that is color. One of our number one biggest expenses is color. It's kind of like, think of it like e-commerce, it's kind of like shipping. If I were to kind of draw a comparison between a salon and e-commerce, the color is kind of like shipping. It's one of your biggest expenses that's not like super exciting and sexy. Um, color is expensive. To get these color tubes from these different vendors, it is crazy how expensive that actually is. It's also crazy how much color you go through. Now, the good news is that the color is a very valuable service, and so you make money, and so there's definitely a lot of margin, but when you're looking at a monthly cost, color is one of our biggest expenses, kind of like shipping. You know, with Tiege Hanley or Pete and Pedro, shipping is one of those expenses in terms of a line item that is just like super high. Another expense that's super high for us is the, the labor, right? Our hourly employees, in terms of assistants, in terms of front desk staff and, and managers, that is another expense that's, that's fairly, fairly high. Now, in terms of how the stylists make money, it's sort of like a kill what you eat type of scenario where these stylists, depending on the level of stylists, I think we have three different levels, um, you know, with your experience as it grows, you make more money, you also make a larger percentage of your commission. Um, but typically, you know, I would say it's, it's 50%. So assume that if you're a stylist, you are keeping 50% of the, the, the service, the fee that you're getting, you're also getting commission on all the products that you sell, and you also get tips. And so, if you're a stylist in a high-end salon, you can make well into six figures and do incredibly well but it's also a great scenario and situation for the salon. We do not do booth rentals. All of our stylists are employees, and so that comes with its own you know, issues, payroll taxes and headaches, but for us, it's a better, more profitable model. With booth rentals, you also lose a little bit of control. Um, in terms of our hours of operation, this was something that was a little bit weird for me. We are closed Sunday and Monday. We are open Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Monday and Tuesday, we're open from 9 a.m. until 6 p.m. Wednesday and Thursday, we're open from 9 a.m. until 8 p.m. Friday, we're open from 9 until 6 and Sunday, we're open from nine until three. And we have been slammed. In terms of what we're working on right now, it's really about optimization and filling up the schedule 100%. Um, 13 stylists, I would say half of them are booked out like for like weeks at a time. The other half, I would say, are like half booked. Um, depending on you know sort of where they came from or their experience or their existing client base when we open. And so our focus right now is filling their schedules up to make sure that they are you know as 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 maxed out as possible. Then we're going to focus on adding additional stylists. We've had stylists that have kind of come over because of Stevens' reputation. Everybody is kind of buzzing about this salon. We also recently submitted uh, for Salon of the Year. We were contacted by a big like hair salon like magazine that said, hey, we saw what you guys are doing. You need to submit. We're having you know, the, the, uh, the submission process for Salon of the Year. Fingers crossed, but it looks, I would be surprised if we didn't win Salon of the Year, honestly. And, and this is a national thing. Something else that we recently did in terms of publicity, I was contacted by Atlanta Magazine, which is a big Atlanta magazine here, and they did a big piece on me, Pete and Pedro, and the salon. They came out, we did a photo shoot, and so once that drops, I think that's going to be all it takes to really sort of amp up and, and max out our current stylists in terms of schedule. The other thing is people are just talking. People are leaving reviews. I mean, it is... This, like there is, when I say there's like nothing like this place, it is like next level in terms of amazing. It is beautiful whenever people walk in, it's just stunning. The feedback has been amazing. And when I go in there, I always like to just like, you know, meet some of the people getting their hair done and I'll ask them, say, hey, what do you think of the place? Are you, are you having a good time? You know, thank you so much for being here. It's all about that customer service, that experience, really making people feel welcome and, and you know, just in inviting them back, really. It's about the experience and the customer service at the end of the day. Um, the website is almost done. If you wanna check it out, salonposta.com, you can go and check it out. I'll link to that down below. So all things considered, I feel really good about the decision to go into business with them and to make this investment. 
you know, like I said, these salons, these high-end salons can do very well. I know what the numbers were from Steven's old salon, and it wasn't run right, if I'm being completely honest. It wasn't maximized, and we can do it a lot better. The other thing that they were not doing was utilizing technology like we are. Um, Tony is amazing. He's almost like a technology savant, my other business partner, Courtney's husband. And, um, and so he has really brought that, that missing piece to the equation and to the partnership to really amplify things and take it to the next level. He is incredible with technology, you know, just interfacing everything and really maximizing and, and elevating just the experience and, and sort of the business end of things. And so that's what's missing with a lot of these salons out there. You know, you'll have somebody who's an amazing stylist, but they're not a great business owner or they're not really good or, or well-versed at technology. And that's what Tony uh, brings to the table. And, and myself, I bring some stuff to the table as well. But it's been an amazing ride so far. It took a while to get to the point of opening but now that we're opening, the feedback has just been phenomenal and it feels good. It feels good to go in and talk to people and just be like, oh, how are you? You know, how are you enjoying it? Do you like the place? And, and everybody has just been so over the top, amazing and encouraging and just really loving it. And it really feels good that I was able to take this old dilapidated piece of crap building that nobody's loved for like 35 years and give it new life and not only make it good, like I made it amazing. And that was the thing when I went in to do this, you know, I didn't spare any expense. I did it the best that I could. I made it as beautiful and as elegant as possible because I, I feel like it represents me and I want to be proud of, of the place that people go into. And I couldn't be happier to be completely honest. It's been a lot of fun. It's also been fun just to go in and just see like a real business sort of like operating. It's been awesome. And, um, I'm very fortunate, you know, the fact that so many of you guys, like, it was crazy. When I posted that video um, on my Alpha M YouTube channel, like the salon tour, like it was like, like overnight, like it was like, boom, a lot of, a lot of you guys were coming, making pilgrimage. I've met so many, probably literally 30 of you guys that have come. I've actually been there or like come in to just check on things or just when I walk by, like I literally go in there like three times a day in the morning on my run, in the evening on my walk. And then typically when I go home to get lunch every day, I'll stop in just to see if there's anything that needs fixing or any issues. And just meeting you guys has been honestly the highlight of the whole experience but i'm excited i hope you guys enjoyed this i i know that it was rambling i know that it was all over the place but um i just wanted to give you a little more information a little more insights into what this business looks like from a financial standpoint i am confident that we are going to do well i am confident that it was a wise in investment and you know we're rolling the dice you know you never know what life has in store you also never know you know what you know, the universe has its story. You know, this whole COVID thing was crazy. But the good news, you know, barring a complete shutdown, you know, hair salons are kind of recession proof. Women, you know, if you've got gray hair, they're not doing their own hair. You know, you might cut down on the number of, you know, colors you get or the number of services, but you're still coming in. And so even when we had the big recession back in like 2006, seven and eight, Stephen's business like stayed, you know, basically like untouched, unchecked. And so that's one of the good things. It's also, for me, it feels good to diversify a bit. Not only do I now have like rental income, I also have another business that I don't have to be like hands-on touching and like breaking rocks in order to, you know, hopefully, you know, make some money at the end of the year. In terms of what, what's next, I don't know. You know, we're gonna get this one up and running. There has been talks about possibly opening a second location, possibly a third um, in Atlanta in different like metro areas but we're not sure, you know, we've got to get this one optimized and cranking before we really make that, that decision. And I need to save money if we're going to do that again. Anyway, guys, I know this is all over the place. I hope you got some value or found this interesting. I just wanted to sort of, you know, pull the curtains back a little bit, talk more openly and honestly about this business, about the financing around the business and how it actually makes money. Um, you know, because you never know where you might grab like a nugget of information. And like I said, when I was growing up, I didn't have anybody to teach me, you know, business literacy or financial literacy. And so I've had to learn everything kind of on my own. And I'm so happy and thankful 
that I get to share that information and the lessons that I've learned, we've learned as a business, you know, to you guys on these vlogs. So thank you so much for being here, guys. And if you've got a business question, guys, down below, start it with business question and ask. If you had one on the last vlog and I didn't get to it today, copy, paste it here. Next week, I'm definitely gonna dive into a lot of your business questions um, because the reason why we do these vlogs is to help you on your entrepreneurial journey. Guys, as always, we love you more than our double monk strap shoes. And if you're ever in the Marietta or Atlanta area, make sure to give us a call. Come say hi to all those spicy senoritas and get your do did.